Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to Know Your Gear QA Live number. I think we're at 161. What? 161? Hold on, I'm double checking to make sure the podcast feed is recording. It is, so we're good. I hope everyone had a decent week. Uh, and uh, obviously, we missed last week. Uh, if you guys uh, don't know what happened, let me tell you what happened. We were going to schedule uh, last Friday's podcast to Saturday. And then I was going to see if Ralph wanted to hop on and do it. And what happened was I had something to do. And unfortunately, a family thing. And I had to take care of that. So I ended up spending Saturday uh, on the road. So driving. So that's what I did. So I hope everybody's fine. Then I started off my week with breaking my mini, uh, mini, my pinky toe. So <laughs> let's just say if your foot hits a ladder at a, at a, at a, at a fast velocity, uh, your the ladder wins and your foot loses. I've been, I think I've been talking about this during, uh, the COVID thing. We've been painting everything in the house. Uh, I've been doing drywall work. Uh, in fact, I think I'm a, um, I, I don't want to say I'm a master drywaller, but I'm, I'm really, I'm really good <laughs> texturing, drywalling, fixing things. I'm, I'm pretty good. So anyways, uh, while I was working, I was barefoot and caught my pinky toe right on the corner and, uh, yep, it hurts, but there's nothing you can do about it. So there you go. Uh, so that's my, that's, that's. That's that. Let's talk about guitar stuff. Hope everybody had a decent week. I know I said that. We'll see if anyone wants to talk about some guitar stuff. Um, always, always rocking 2009 says anyone looking to score a line six pod pro go the he's a, I, that's an interesting thing because I I've been curious about that unit. I think I've said that, um, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure uh, that if I understand the email correctly, uh, Moore, <laughs> Moore, uh, Moore pedals, uh, Moore like, um, like, you know, Moo, like a cow, Moore uh, is going to send me the G300 Lite. And that's interesting because I have the G300 and it has the wall pedal and the light is a little different. And I thought maybe we'll cool little video would be try that against the, uh, stomp, but it'd be really nice to try it against the pod go something like that. N let you guys see the options. I'm curious too. Um, let's see. Hold on a second. Ah, Christopher Woods got a great question. He says, Hey, thoughts on the Mad Hatter wiring harnesses and Terminator systems. Uh, I haven't tried the Terminator system, but I've tried Mad Hatter products before and I like them. He's local. He lives in Arizona making those wiring harnesses. If you're not familiar with the Mad Hatter stuff, it's a pre-wired, easy clip connect systems. Very cool stuff. Everything I've ever tried has been very cool. I think the first time I ever saw one was somebody brought one in the shop and had me install it in their guitar. And they said, Hey, this will make it easy. And I was like, that was pretty cool. And then I think I did a video of one. I'm pretty sure I did a video of one of the units on one of the sharpened my axes, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, but it's definitely a video. And um, it's funny when you make a lot of videos over time, you kind of forget what you've done. And I remember I bumped in the guy at Matt Hatter in the guitar center and he said, hi. And he said, Hey, I really like the, you know, you know what, you know what I said and what I liked about it on the video. And then I remember thinking like, Oh man, what video did I do? <laughs> Cause I can't remember. It's, you know, it's like I said, it gets, they start blurring together over time. People ask me questions. I've actually had this happen recently in the last couple of weeks. Somebody asked me, um, they were asking me, I didn't know they were telling me about a video review I did of a product. They were asking me about the product. And I said, I don't know. I have to check it out. And they go, no, 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 that you did. You reviewed it like two years ago. And I'm like, oh, I, I did. <laughs> what I say? <laughs> uh, couldn't. Uh, sometimes you just can't matter. I remember. All right. Uh, let's see. I'm thinking of Matt Hatter still. I have some super chats, although guys hold tight. I just want to see what's what's going on first. Uh, Harrison wants to know when's the Charvel Ibanez roasted guitars coming out video. Um, you know, that one I finished, but didn't edit. So I'll have to edit it. I've been releasing a video about every other day. So if you notice, that seems to be the trend. I think I'm going to be at that rate for a while. So there won't be a video tomorrow, but should be a video on Sunday. Okay. 
Uh, I'm sorry. I'm just looking at some questions. All right, maybe I will. Oh, wait, let me hop on some super chats then because I'm looking back and forth. I missed one episode. I feel like I'm out of practice already. The uh, Okay. We have a couple first ones. The first one comes from Eddie. Eddie with the dash. Eddie uh, says, just some amp funds uh, now that you're, you sold your amps and replaced them with guitars. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, the room, this was the, this was the, the room I've been doing in sections, if you haven't been able to tell, and this has been going on since December or November of last year. And, um, what it is, is this room I'm in is very small. This is my office is a very small room and I'm maximizing the amount of, uh, stuff I can put in this room because, um, basically I'm sick of the overflow in the other room. So I'm trying to put it in, in one room and use it and utilize it and have it be uh, work for me. What ended up happening was, if you notice, I had the rack cases, you know, the stands, uh, sideways cases, the fender ones. And I was trying different things to see how could I get everything to work. And I really decided that uh, this is for me. So, you know, this is a little bit for me now. Um, some of the stuff, when I originally started doing YouTube videos, the way I had my room set up was was ideal. That's how I liked it. And then over time you start going, Oh, I need to make my room more YouTube studio like friendly. And then after a while you start realizing that it's not, it's not very conducive to enjoying yourself. And then that isn't the same as uh, reviewing, you know what I mean? Uh, basically what it is I'm trying to say is I'm trying to make the room so I can enjoy it. Maybe it makes the videos uh, more enjoyable as well too. So what's happened now is in front of me, I have my wall of amps and behind me I have a wall of guitars and then that works out great. And so when I'm filming, this is conducive. When I'm in here, it makes sense. And again, it just makes total sense for me. I hope it makes sense to you guys. BK said, thank goodness it's Friday. Yes. You know, what's funny is, uh, uh, I don't even know what day it is anymore. <laughs> Ever since COVID, it seems like all the days are the same days. Uh, it's day. So, uh, so yeah, I kind of like maybe I think my week's uh, thrown off because I didn't do a Friday show. Uh, Fret Level Midnight says, do you feel there is a difference in quality? Much to say of a knockoff ditto looper like uh, the, uh, I'm probably saying it wrong, the Amon, Amun. Amun Nano Looper. I've I've owned the Amun Nano Looper. I'm probably saying it wrong, guys, but it's A M M O O. It's just uh like A M Moon, um, Nano Looper and the Diddle Looper by TC. I cannot hear a single difference between those two loopers. So you know, um, the only thing I didn't like uh, about the um the Amun one was the knob was really tiny. But I didn't like that about my Ditto as well. And my Ditto has this giant. I call it a stomper knob uh, throwback to anybody who remembers stompers. This, there were little cars when you were kids, not matchbox and hobos, but they were little cars. They had a battery in them and you could put different wheels on them. And then they were, they were about this big, about three inches long and they were different tops on them and you could put different wheels and you'd let them go and they would go over different terrain. So every time I see big wheels, I call them stomper wheels. Cause I just remember them as that. Um, but, uh, no, in fact, uh, I haven't experienced a whole lot of quality difference in a lot of the loopers. And it's probably because, and I'm guessing, I'm just guessing from somebody out there always goes, no, Phil, let me, let me tell you what I, here, here's the deal. I would imagine just like a lot of things, there is a chip that they all buy from one source or they're sourcing, uh, you know, too many of many of the chips, the recording, uh, part of the pedal is probably coming from one place or it's coming from, very few you know places so they're very common um that is really common with things like that like class d amplifiers you know what i mean the class d power sections tend to come from like taiwan and uh, just a couple of different manufacturers manufacture that and you start noticing manufacturers when they get into certain types of products in our industry because of the fact that we don't we don't sell tons of product they tend to go with things that are already made there's no, there's no real money in our industry to sit there and have, you know, it's not like, it's not like Intel where they can have a development part of the building and they develop a, you know, a chip for this new 
piece of this new phone. So in our industry, a lot of times if you can find use for things that already exist and put them in your devices, that's a really good idea. So my guess is a lot of these manufacturers are buying the same chips and there's probably levels of quality of the chips and what they do uh, in these loopers, these recording units. But my guess is they're, they're pretty much the same. And I'm not just saying that because I think that for one thing, I'm saying that because when I tried all the loopers and I went through like a I, I can't say every looper, but man, 20 different loopers I've owned. There's just not a whole lot of quality difference in the way they sound. There's always a quality difference in the feature set that they have. You know what I mean? Some of them, it's like, okay, this is cool because it's small. This one's cool because, like I said, the boss one I like because it has the LED that goes in a circle that lets you know where the one is going to hit. Sometimes that's really nice, especially if I've ever had to use a looper live, like in front of people, I always gross, uh, grab my boss uh, RC1 looper because sometimes if you've ever experienced this, you can't hear sometimes live. You know what I mean? Everything's on the fly when you're live. And so having that little like look down and go, oh, okay, okay, this is where we're at. Th what I'm hearing is lining up with what I'm seeing is sometimes a nice little relief. So, so, you know, um, but yeah, if you no, I don't think there's any reason to buy the TC did a looper as well. I ended up buying a bunch of those little loopers and trying them and I ended up keeping my ditto looper, but mostly it was because, like I said, I already put the big uh, knob on it and I, I like it. The quality seems fine. The casing, because again, that's where the quality differences are. The switch, you know what I mean? The power, you know what I mean? The, the So stuff like that. All right. AJ Me uh, says, hey, Phil, I picked up an EVH standard. Floyd Bridge isn't uh, parallel to the body. It sounds like the bridge should be decked according to EV specs. But should decking the bridge need to be tilted? Um, again, it's tough, buddy, because I can't see it. But so you know, uh, all of the EVH guitars I've come across have the bridge against the body. And I've come across now two or three of the EVH uh, guitars that have the, the bridge that like caved in or, or cracked or damaged the body from being against the body. That's not always the case, but I've seen that. But so you know... Um, the bridge should be against the body. Let me put it this way. Eddie Van Halen's guitars are against the body. He runs the, the bridge right up on the body. He's not floating in any way. So um, the, the thing you just don't want to get carried away with is just once it's up against the body, here's here's what I would do. Quick, quick, uh, AJ, here's a quick thing to do. What I like to do when I do a bridge, like a Floyd Rose against a body is the easiest thing in the world to set up when you're talking about the bridge, okay? What basically what you want to do is tighten the, the, the two screws in the back, uh, you know, put the strings on, tune it up, tighten the strings and kind of get the body against or the bridge against the body. OK, and then get to get the car in tune. And then what I want you to do is slowly loosen the screws on the back of the guitar and make and and check the tuning and the tuning won't change. And what you want is you want to get the screws as loose as you can without the bridge being pulled forward by the strings. Right. And that way, you know, you're not over cranking it. I know it's going to be a little difficult without any visual aids, but just be clear what I'm going to say. I'm going to repeat it just to make sure he's clear. What I'm basically saying is, is you want to crank the bridge down so it's against the body, but you don't want to over crank it. So like I said, what you want to do is make sure the screws are only as tight as they need to be to hold the bridge against the body from the strings, because otherwise you're going to be putting too much force. Uh, and again, that's a little tough in a live QA kind of thing. Maybe that could be a video. I'm not sure. Stuff like that. I just don't know if that's interesting to most people. Um, uh, again, it's not the views I'm talking about, just interest. I've been actually changed. I changed the channel. If you haven't noticed, I have switched uh, the 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 way the channel works. This started a while back. I'm now no longer looking at views. Um, not that I ever looked at views too much anyways, but now I'm only looking at uh, basically minutes consumed, the percentage of time that you're watching. Um, and this mainly has to do with YouTube constantly telling me, and obviously anybody making content now, they're kind of telling you like, oh, the people like your video more because it's getting more views. Oh, they like it less because it's getting less views. But I've had this and it was very frustrating for me. I know that equates to money. Okay, I'm not dumb. I understand what YouTube's saying. Hey, more minutes consumed or more views is more money. However, what I found was, is I could get people to click on stuff, but they're not engaging as deeply. And what I would rather be interested in is this. When I make content, like I did this week with Tim Pierce, the video I did with Tim Pierce, one of my favorite videos I've done all year, if not the favorite video I've done, period, hands down. Without a doubt, if I look at that by 
by how much you watch of the video, you guys are out of control. Almost all of you are watching the entire video. That's how much you guys love it. Um, and I, I don't want to like, you know, say that you guys love something, but you do. Cause according to the metrics, according to the analytics that I'm seeing, you are watching the crap out of that video. Uh, uh, the average person is like 78, 90%, 78 to 80% of the video is being consumed by the average person. That's a lot. All right. Uh, you're lucky sometimes you get 40, 50%. So you're watching it, but it's not getting a lot of views, which means it's not making any money. But here's what I've noticed. When people watch more of it, they enjoy more of it. And I get a better, I'm going to say this not to offend anyone. I get a better audience out of the deal. Um, what I find is that when I can get a, a reach out of views, sure, I'll get a lot of you guys to watch, but then it seems like the comment sections, everything's full of a bunch of assholes. So it's, and I don't mean people who put trolling comments, it's just people are just, I get it. They don't, they're not into this. They're just watching it because YouTube is, because th uh, they're throttling people with recommendations. In other words, they're telling you to watch my videos. They're suggesting them because I'm getting lots of views. And that's not what I'm interested in. Uh, what I'm interested in is uh, making content that's engaging to the audience I already have and then slowly growing that as I've been doing. So just saying, you know, I've kind of adjusted that stuff. Seems to be working. And at least I'm very pleased with it. Uh, comments are really positive for the most part. Uh, interest is really peaked. Uh, you know, like I said, everything's working except for the views uh, are still pretty good. I, I, I always I always have averaged about 22,000 views per video when you take my average. And I, right now I think I'm averaging about 21,000 views. So it's not that bad. It's not that much of off, but believe it or not, it's, it's good. All right. Uh, what else? Um, hold on. Sean, uh, Sean saying nothing wrong there, Phil classic, uh, quantity versus quality. I agree. Quality. Um, and that's, and that's what I, I started focus on. Uh, I did the five things video. I hope you guys enjoyed the DiMaggio five things video. I, I absolutely love that video too. Again, one of my favorite, probably my favorite five things video, just because, um, I was able to get Larry to, 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 to kind of verify all that stuff. And when I do those five things videos, I have to get somebody to verify all this information I've heard and it's really tough and sometimes they don't want to do it. And, and he was just really cool about everything. Um, okay. Uh, Rodrigo's got a question. It says, Hey Phil, what are your thoughts about buying a custom guitar versus replacing the neck on one of your unused guitars. I'm thinking about buying a Kiesel or changing the neck of one of my strats. Um, well, here's the thing, man. Changing the neck is going to be the simplest, easiest, cheapest solution um, to do. You know what I mean? Uh, there's nothing wrong with a parts of caster. Keep in mind, most musicians, famous musicians, I should say, famous musicians are known for their parts of caster. Obviously, everybody re refers to Eddie Van Halen, but there are tons of parts of casters. Think about this. Uh, Pete Townsend, uh, his most famous, I think one of the most famous, uh, tellies you see him play is a, uh, a telly made from Schecter parts back when Schecter was a parts company before it became a guitar company. So parts, uh, casters or parts guitars are very common. I'm a big proponent from that. Um, why I always do these kind of mod videos is obviously I have a love of guitars. I, I just love them. Okay. I just love, I love them. I love talking about them, playing them, working on them. Yeah, right. It's where I, it's, just, it's what piques my interest. It's what gets me excited every day, wakes me up and makes me think I'm glad I'm alive today because I get to play guitar. So that being said, so that because of that I have an appreciation on a lot of different guitars, but realistically though, to me, the heart, of, uh, heartbeat of guitars, I think in today's age is the fact that anyone can take any guitar, mod it a little bit and have something very exciting. Let's, let's be very clear. There is no need to buy a custom guitar anymore. I don't think anyone thinks that. I hope they don't. You can mod any guitar into being a very, very personal guitar. Again, we're not going to say good or bad. That's not what it's about. It's about being personally connected to you. A guitar, when a guitar is right, when a guitar feels right, sounds right, you bond with it in a way that's hard to explain. In fact, if you collect guitars, you knew exactly what I'm saying more than anything. Because as some people go, oh man, what do you need all those guitars for? And you go, the irony is you don't. But the funny part in the back of your head, every time somebody says, why do you need all those guitars? You always think, oh man, I feel so dumb because you know, deep down, there's only two or three of these that you love. 
Now, that being said, so you can take any guitar, mod it, and make it a very good guitar for you. Personal guitar plays great, feels great. So if you're asking me, you know, should you change out a neck? Of course, why not? Try that. It works great. The keys look experience for me, I did the build out on this uh, uh, Theos. Uh, it's very good. Uh, right. It's very good experience uh, as, as a custom build out guitar. I did the Halo custom build out. That was a very good experience. Uh, I had a good experience. They they did that stuff. Now, uh, I've said this in both videos. Both companies knew exactly that they were going to me, knew exactly that I'm a YouTube channel that talks about guitars. And so, of course, did I get any special treatment? I'm sure I did. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm laughing because I'm like, yeah, I, I would imagine I did. That's why I disclose that be aware of that um so uh but but i say that always keeping in mind that it's not always the case you know what i mean not always you know not every company is going to do the, the best job for you so be be aware read the re uh, all reviews right channels like me are about getting information out i hope that god you guys really think about this when you see a channel like my size which again channels with let's say a hundred thousand subs doing content I always love it. People are trying to figure out, are they telling the truth? They're not telling the truth. Who cares? Watch the content, enjoy it, and then go find out. It's very easy with a click. You can find if I'm full of crap, it's so easy to figure out. Phil says this guitar is good. Let's go on and look at written reviews by average people playing the guitar. Wait, they're all bad. That guy's full of crap. Or the company strategically made me had an experience that's different than yours. So like I said, always do so a little bit of research. It's a really easy thing to figure out. What I'm trying to do with you guys is trying to get you excited, obviously tell you guys what I'm experiencing. And trust me, that sometimes sucks because, because I do follow the philosophy of, uh, I will tell you guys what I experience. Even, and that's what I said, I've, I've told you guys this before. When I did the Lizzie Hale guitar, I said that in that video, that I said the guitar was amazing. In fact, it was probably one of the best guitars I have ever played. Uh, I would put it in my top 10 like experiences of guitars. And I and I said this in the video. I said, but Epiphone sent that to me. I actually had to send it back when I was done. It felt really set up really well. I mean, it felt like somebody went through it and made it play great. Did they? I don't know. But I wanted to make sure you guys knew that because that's a slightly different experience than like, and that's why when I buy something from a store and I personally buy guitars, I let you guys know that too, if that's a good or bad experience. So, but again, even with me trying to be as transparent and as honest as I can, I would only look at me as entertainment versus entertainment and information. And then like I said, verify it by not other people, many people, <laughs> right? That's how you figure out how, how consistent is the quality. I can tell you that they can make one guitar great, but to find out if they make all their guitars great, Go look at a bunch of reviews and see. All right. Um, again, I always apologize for drinking water, but I'm talking a lot and I got to drink water. Okay. Uh, I got a couple of super chats. I want to hit them real fast. Uh, Carlos has got one. He says, got my KYG RNA music Lone Star shirt. What? <laughs> it says, uh, where do I send the pick? I didn't know we had that shirt. <laughs> That's cool. That must be, I, I think I told you guys this. My wife makes custom shirts for people. Sometimes it's because I just tell her to do it. Uh, of course, I shouldn't say tell her. I ask her nicely. Uh, I say, hey, can you make the shirt for this person? Uh, and we did one for our music. I said, can you make the Texas, uh, yes, a flag on it? And she does it. Uh, I don't know how she does it in Photoshop or whatever she does. And then, you know, she sends it to them. Um, and then sometimes it's for patrons and stuff. And then, uh, but for some reason, if you guys have been, you guys have been sending me emails about the hats too, by the way, I know the hats are messed up for some reason. My Teespring account is kind of messed up right now. There's things in the account that you can see that you shouldn't be seeing. There's things you, that you should be seeing like the hats and you can't see right now. Although have at it because at this point, none of it's bad. Uh, it's just, you know, so, uh, to answer your question, Carlos, you can send it right to me. PMG, uh, P McKnight seven at gmail.com or ask know your gear at uh, gmail.com and uh, just put picture in the subject. It will go right to me. Stuff like that. I I'm a subject person. It's uh, it's, I can't read every email um, and I put them in folders and I try to go through them, but subjects like pictures, stuff like that. I try to filter those out because obviously I want those pictures for the videos and it's nothing I have to really spend, you know, 10 minutes reading and, and responding to it's something I can just download and, and have that. And, uh, and plus I want to make sure you guys, you guys spent the money to do that. I want to make sure you guys get, 
get that out there. Uh, and so he's got a second part to his question. He says, Hey, thoughts on the Fender Mustang GTX amplifier thinking of getting the hundred watt version. I, I haven't tried it. Fender guys talked to me, said that they would be I interested in sending me one. Uh, I asked them if they would send me the tone master amp as well to, again, this is to check out, uh, and do reviews of. And, um, and then, you know, it's really hard right now. It's COVID. I know they're sending out stuff to YouTubers. Uh, but again, Maybe they only had 10 to send out and they found 10 channels that they wanted to send out this time. You know, there's all kinds of things that happen in the marketing part of that world uh, for those companies. Or maybe just, you know, something's taken up his mind, his mind time, mind share, so to speak, because there's stuff going on. Um, I will, Carlos, I will send a very nice email this week to Fender, uh, the Fender guy saying, hey, just follow up. Somebody asked me about that amp again. Uh, and if they send one out, I'll definitely do a video of it. Cause again, I'm curious too. I obviously, I like my positive group spark. I have it right here next to me still. They didn't make me send it back. So I'm keeping it. <laughs> I, I, I was, I, I've never, in fact, I just going to tell you the whole positive grid thing is a disaster as forth is shipping and all this stuff. And it looks like most of the new comments are telling everybody, everybody saying that they're getting their amps finally. And I understand the whole logic of why they need to market, although I don't agree with it. I understand it. It's a different thing, by the way. You can understand something and not agree with it. Um, but damn, that thing is good. <laughs> so I do enjoy plugging into it every day. Um, and uh, and I just, uh, in case anyone asks me, especially if you're super chat, don't, don't. Uh, I, yes, I still have my katana. And no, I'm not keeping my katana. I just don't want to get rid of the katana yet because I got a feeling that you guys might want me to do something with the katana. And before I sell my katana, uh, I, there might be content to make with it. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, grumpy Mike. Hey, grumpy Mike, by the way, I enjoyed your video the other day. Uh, the grumpy Mike video with the acoustic the Harley Benton. Very cool video. Uh, if you guys, uh, check out his channel, grumpy Mike's one of our viewers and he's starting a channel and go check it out. It's and uh, he just did a Harley Benton acoustic. It was a very cool little video demo. I enjoyed it. It's really nice to get perspective from someone who's, you know, again, they're not, at this point, I'm going to say I'm tenured, right? I've been doing this. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm great at it by any means, but obviously at this point, you know, my experience, not only with owning a store or repairing guitars or now, you know, doing all the other stuff I have to do, uh, plus doing YouTube, you know, obviously I'm hoping you guys, uh, trust my opinions, but sometimes just having someone who's just, they got no skin in the game, just, they want to make the video is sometimes the best video sometimes. So, uh, anyways, Grumpy Mike says, just got my hot rod deluxe working again. So I thought I would share the love and why not? Well, thank you, man. I appreciate that very much. Uh, shut up. Let's talk says how to adjust the nut height with no feeler gauge. Um, yeah, you can do it without a feeler gauge. First of all, you can use guitar picks to, as a feeler gauge. Uh, if you're like me and you have every kind of thickness of guitar pick, you can definitely do that. Um, you can also, if you don't have a filler gauge, you can also use calipers and maybe use a business card or it, right. And then use the caliper to figure out how thick the business card is and then fold it. And then that gives you thickness. And there's, there's different ways to get a, the, the, uh, the using a gap gauge is basically what I'm saying. I went forever without a gap gauge forever. Uh, <laughs> that was probably the last now, when I think about tools, when I think about tools, they're not power tools or drill presses or, or anything, band saws or anything like that. When I think about uh, the setup tools, I think of the gap gauge being the absolute last tool I ever bought because I was able to do all of the things I needed to do without that particular tool. Um, so, so you can do it. But I would do uh, use a pick if you're trying to figure out uh, something with the gap gauge. Uh, you can use different picks. What I mean by picks is all the picks are like, you know, 0.75 millimeters, one millimeter, half a millimeter, 0.25 millimeters, right? You get it. You can use different ones like little gap gauges. They work. Plus a gap gauge is pretty dirt cheap to get if you want to get your hands on one as well. Just be careful. Sometimes the gap gauges you get like Harbor Freight stuff, they're too thick for what you need. You need ones that get really thin, really crazy. Um, Don says thoughts on the ultra strat and the Lincoln Brewster sign strat. And I don't know anything about the Lincoln Brewster sign strat. I haven't seen it. So I don't know what that is. Um, but the ultra strat is the, if I'm not mistaken, the ultra strat is the new, um, uh, deluxe became the didn't deluxe turn into something else. And then ultra or did it turn in the ultra, right? Ultra came after or ultra was third. Now it's so confusing. There was standard. They went to professional, right? So then, Deluxe went to something and then to ultimate, right? Is that correct? What was the other one called? Why can't I think of it? 
It's like Fender just keeps changing the names of this stuff. I have not tried the Ultra Strat. So, you know, uh, I, I've not even seen one in person. <laughs> so um, all I know is we talked about it briefly once on a live show about the fact that when they released it, they were like, this is going to blow your mind. And everybody thought it was going to have stainless steel frets and a new Elite. Thank you so much, Nicholas. It was Deluxe Steel Elite to uh, Ultra Strat. Thank you so much. You are correct. Um, I had an Elite. I regret get rid of it, getting rid of it. I had an orange, metallic orange Elite. I loved it. I did not love the pickups. And it was one of those deals where I was, it was in my head going, man, if I buy this guitar, and I think at that point, that guitar was going to cost me 12, right? I think that was the cost on it. Um, maybe 11. So it wasn't unreasonable, but I was like, man, and then another 200 bucks for pickups. And I was like, I just didn't want to do it. Um, but I loved the elite that I was playing. I love the, the new truss rod. I love the neck. Um, the ultra I have not tried at all. Not, not anything about it, but keep in mind, I, I have a strat that I absolutely love. So it's tough for me to try out new strats if it's not for the channel. And my tra my channel doesn't rate for stuff like that. Companies aren't going to like Fender isn't going to send me expensive guitars to, to review. Um, <laughs> uh, somebody put ultra disappointment. Yeah, I, that's what I got from the sense. But again, I hate to say that because I haven't touched it. You know what I mean? It's funny. It's like the ultra strat to me. The reason I was I'm apprehensive to say anything about it, positive or negative is I feel like the Silver Sky was like that. I th my first reaction to Silver Sky, I think, lined up with everybody else. Like, really? Really? You made a Strat that's a BRS. Really? And then I played a, a Silver Sky and I went, oh, this is really nice. <laughs> I'm like, oh, maybe maybe they knew something. I uh, can't say it's the best guitar ever, but to say that it's a really good guitar, I could say that. So it was cool. Um, uh John, uh, John at uh, uh, Magpoc says, what do you think about line six various guitars? You know, they sent me one and I just couldn't get into it to save my life. I just tried everything. And what happens is the whole, you know, the know your gear thing is that instead of having reactions like that, like it's good or bad, or I like it or dislike it, uh, is to kind of spend some time and try to figure out who's it for and what's it for. And if it's not for me, you know, who's it for kind of thing. Right. And here's what ended up happening. The more I played with, the more I realized this is a fantastic guitar for the right guitar player. Uh, I really believe this. I really think if, if there were, if you're in a situation where you need a guitar, like the Varox, the Varox is a guitar by line six that can simulate different tunings, any kind of tuning, all programmable. Right. Um, Different sounds of guitars. You can acoustic, which I think the acoustic sounds really good on the guitar, by the way. Um, baritone guitars, which I guess would be like tuning as well. But you can get tellies and Les Pauls and Strats. And and I was focused. I was hyper-focused on the wrong thing at first. I was hyper-focused on the sound. And I'd, I'd play and i go, this doesn't sound like this. You know what I mean? And I'd get like, you know, this isn't the same. <laughs> I did. I had like very visceral reactions to this guitar, uh, just plugging in going, you know, who are they kidding? $1,500. And this doesn't even sound like the thing it's supposed to sound like. And then what I did is I, after I have that reaction, which is fair, it's a fair reaction. You know, I mean, the first time I heard Guns N' Roses, I thought it was the worst thing I ever heard in my life. That was the first thing I ever thought when I heard Guns N' Roses first time. I'm a huge Guns N' Roses fan now. It's one of those things that happens to us sometimes. Sometimes the first time you try a new flavor, it's the worst flavor until the second taste or the third taste. So um, so same thing with that guitar. What ended up happening was I said, screw this. I'm going to record with it. And I know that's not what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be for live. But here's what happened. I was able to record and have so much fun. I actually threw down so many tracks. I was like, oh, cool. Here's this sound. Oh, and then I'll layer it with this. Oh, and then wouldn't it be cool if there was a baritone just for this lick? And... I had a blast with it and it was really great. And then I was like, okay, well, how to construct that into a video? And that's where I got a little stuck. And that's where I've been stuck. But I have definitely swung around now and I'm a fan of the Variax guitar. Um, and the Somnium guitar, which is somewhere behind me. Yeah, it's the one with the, it's got single wheels in it right now. Right there. Somnium guitar is like an analog Variax, right? It can't do all the tuning, but it can do all these different pickup sounds. And here's what I could tell you. If you are a connoisseur, like how I put my nose up like that, if you're a connoisseur of pickups, the Somnium guitar is for you. It's 
I want only the best, right? I'm making fun of myself, by the way, because that's me a little bit. I'm like, ah, I have to have the real tone of a PAF humbucker. <laughs> but if that's not where you're coming from, if you're coming from a usage uh, perspective, which is, hey, I'll get use out of this. The Variax can do anything any guitar can do, and it's going to do it very well. Um, and uh, and that's why, like I said, actually, you know, what help, helped me was watching... Um, Frog Leap and Rabir, they're touring with the, one of those. You know, I guess they're each playing with them because they're doing so many covers and different tunings and songs. And they sounded great. Every video I watched online, I was like, this sounds great. And um, I, I went online like everybody and I looked and there was tons of players using Varax and they sounded great. And that's why I said I put it in perspective. So the Varax to me is a guitar that if you're a collector of guitars and you want a baritone and a telly and a strat, eh, maybe the Varax is not for you. It's not a it's not a guitar. It's a practicality thing. It's a guitar that makes sense to the person who needs it. And so if you need a guitar like that, it's a, could be a lifesaver for a musician does everything. Um, the one I have is really cool too. Cause it has a thing where if the battery goes dead, uh, which by the way happened right now, the battery is dead and I can't find the charger. So <laughs> it's in it's downstairs. Uh, so I got to find it uh, and charge it back up, but it works fine. Cause the pickup works. There's a pickup in it so you can still play it. So that's one of the things that makes me like really like it. Cause it's, they thought of everything. So um, let's do. Okay. Let me do. Uh, let me do another super chat real quick since they're, again, we don't want to stack up too far. Uh, we have. We have Wally. 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 Oops, hold on, where are you at? Oh, we have Wally. Okay, it says, Hi, uh, Phil, I have used a BC Rich Gunslinger Retro with a slanted pickup, but the pole pieces do not line up with the strings correctly. Is this normal? Uh, installed is a standard uh, spaced uh, pickup. Do I need an F-space pickup? Um, I would imagine, even though the slanting of the pickup, so you gotta understand the whole reason for slanting, well, there's a thousand reasons for slanting the pickup. One of the main reasons for slanting the pickup is like when Eddie Van Halen stuck a humbucker in there, he was saying the pole pieces didn't line up and he kind of cocked it at an angle to get it to line up. That's one of the stories I heard. It's probably true. Um, I do, I can tell you this. It's funny that you say that. I have it right here. And then I get, oh, I do. I was going to say, maybe I don't. Um, I had Somnium do this for me. This here is a humbucker uh, cartridge, so I can put a humbucker in it. This here is a slanted humbucker cartridge. So I'm working on a video right now where we compare a slanted uh, slanted humbucker to a regular humbucker and a slanted single coil to a regular single coil to see if you can hear a difference. You're going to hear a difference. We're going to try to figure out, uh, in, in this video, what I'm going to try to do is I'm not only figure out if there's a difference, because that's kind of the obvious what is the difference and can we fix that difference with an EQ pedal or something like that, right? So adjustments. Um, but to answer your question, uh, first, don't, uh, don't um, worry about the pole pieces lining up. One of the things I did with the Somnium guitar, which I was going to make a video about, was pole pieces alignment. And the problem was it makes no difference. The video would have to be literally 30 seconds. It would be me going, hey, everybody, let's see if pole pieces make a sound difference. And then I loaded in a, 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 a JB uh, pickup and a JB uh, Trimbucker pickup in the guitar. And I strummed them both. And I was like, and it makes no difference. Thanks, everybody. Goodbye. It was literally 38 seconds. There would be, you would, you would be furious. It would be me talking for five minutes about my life and my opinions on cats versus dogs. And then me going, oh, by the way, you want to hear the pickup? There's no difference. So I could not tell a difference, not bending, not playing. I can, that doesn't, it's not, it, that's just because I took the same type of pickup and did the video does not quantify that uh, answer. But as a video, it was almost impossible to make to hear to hear the difference so um i think maybe maybe having the slugs right underneath the strings probably better sure i mean i could argue that you know what i mean of course you know everything can be one percent better of course right every car or every race car can be one percent faster right so uh do you, my question to you is or my answer to you is yes i think if you got an f space if it's not lining up with a regular pickup if you do an f space will it line up better most likely because i would imagine that that's what's happening right now it's not wide enough uh for the spacing even tilted but my next thought would be i don't think you're gonna hear a difference you'll hear a difference more because of it being slanted than it would be for being spaced correctly is my thought so what i'm saying is if you like the way it sounds save your money buddy 
Don't do it. Although if you're thinking about switching out the pickup because you don't like the pickup, then yeah, I'd get the F space and you'd be fine. And either way, if you get the F space and it's a little too wide, I think it'd be fine again. It's fine. Or you can get bar magnet pickups and then you don't have to worry about anything because the entire pickup is under under the one big magnet at all times, like the X two ends and all those kind of those style, uh, uh, Bill Lawrence pickups, anything with just the solid bar. That's kind of the theory behind that. Hope that helps a little bit. Um, let me do, I'm going to do one more super chat and then I'll hop over and see what you guys are talking about. Uh, it says, uh, Bruce says, Hey Phil, I have a 69 telly thin line. I bought a 69 fender case. Did I read that if the store, wait, did I read that if the store, I, okay, hold on. I just got to decipher what this says because I know, I think a word's off. It says, did I read that if the store, if I store it in that case, the felt may damage the finish? Um, well, here's the, no. <laughs> Uh, you, you have probably read that. Yes. Guitars, especially lacquer guitars can have reactions to the, the interiors in cases. And we've seen that everybody's kind of seen some version of that. Is it going to happen? It's not guaranteed, but can it happen? Yes. My guess is you're saying 69 thin line. First of all, tell you thin line. I'm assuming you mean the reissue guitar and it's probably a polyurethane or polyester finish. If it's in Mexico, it's probably polyester. It could be polyurethane if it's the US. Either way, I think that finish is going to be fine. It's bulletproof. Those finishes, polyurethane is just, I mean, it's it's great finish. I've never seen any issues where, where it chemically reacts or reacts to a, a, a material like rubber or cloth or felt or anything like that. Um, the only thing is obviously like any, any, uh, surface, it could be scratched by something, but it's only scratched by things that would scratch pretty much any surface. So unless you have a real 69th in line that you bought in 69, that would be then lacquer, um, nitrocellus lacquer. Or if you have a nitrocellus lacquer reissue guitar, you'd have to make sure that's the case. If you have a lacquer guitar, yeah, storing the case can be problematic. The big thing is you just don't want to store it for long periods of time. Long periods of time means exactly what that means. Long periods of time, not days, weeks, months, years. Definitely not years, probably not months. Uh, wait, definitely not years. Months are going to get a little scary, so don't do that. Weeks, you should be fine. So there you know. Th things are going to have a reaction that way, uh, that fast. But, uh, but you know, there you go. That's my answer on that. So like I said, find out what finish you have first, and then you should be fine. So um, you can store many things, uh, anything. Um, let's go over to this. I know you guys have still super chats. I appreciate that. I'll hit them, I promise. Let's... Uh, Let's look, see what you guys are talking about. Uh, oh, Wanna Beetle said, uh, uh, you got your Chipson shirt. I did get the picture of the Chipson shirt. Um, but I haven't been responding to emails in the last two days <laughs> at all. So I've seen them. I've seen a bunch of emails because the reason is, is because sometimes uh, I'm sometimes, I shouldn't do this. I, it's a habit I'm trying to break. It's really bad. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm watching a movie or doing something relaxing, I get out my phone and I'll start looking at some of the emails you guys are sending and I'll skim them. And I know, and the reason why I say I shouldn't do that is because I know for a fact, I'm not going to respond because I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I try not to respond with my phone. I try to respond to my phone as little as possible because uh, I think it's happening to all of us. I feel like I feel like I couldn't tell you percentage. I feel like half, half the time I send you guys a message back on my phone. I go, Oh, you know what? This, why don't I just do this all on the phone real fast when I have time? And I start doing that. And then every once in a while, I'll go back to read my answer. And I go, that doesn't even make sense. What the hell did I type? How did it even make sense to me? What I sent, <laughs> right? Your phone starts putting in different words after a while. It's like, I'm telling you like, yeah, tune your guitar to standard. And instead it says, I tune up all the time with mayonnaise. And you're like, what? the hell was that? So, um, I try not to do that stuff. So sometimes I see that stuff and I go, Oh, cool. And I put the little star next to it to remind me to hit it later. But last couple of days, um, you know, I haven't been reading emails. I've been doing other stuff, unfortunately. Oh, uh, I'd rather be re reading emails than what I've been doing. How that helps. Um, okay. Oh, Stefan said he got a slick SL 50 and he loves it. Awesome. They are good guitars. That was Ballant that sent me those uh, those slick guitars, and we did the giveaways and stuff, and they were fantastic. <laughs> I 
Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, I, I'm going to try and read this, but I uh, let's see what it says because I'm curious. It says, my Strats bridge pickup has too narrow spacing and it's way quieter than the middle neck pickup. Now, I got to, I, we got to clear a couple of things before we can even talk about this question. The first thing is we got to make sure that the heights are all accurate. The heights are going to be more important. Like you guys are talking about uh, pole uh, sp spacing on your, on the pole pieces on your pickups. I'm not saying that doesn't matter. Let's just like I said, let's talk about the order of things that are going to matter first. First and foremost, the reason why a bridge pickup could be quieter than a middle pickup first could be because it's not adjusted properly in the heights. So your middle pickup might be higher. You know what I mean? Physically higher, closer to the strings is basically, I shouldn't say higher. It's closer to the strings. So your bridge pickup may need to be adjusted. It's height and have its height adjusted. So that's the first thing I would check. And you definitely, and, and even if you're like, Oh, well they're not, you know, let's say you, I, I want to tell you right now, if you look at them and they're both equally high, don't, don't say that that's, that's normal. I, what I want you to do is adjust them until they're the same. And then if you look at them and it looks way out of whack, then you might have a problem. And that's the first step. So obviously if you adjust them and the problem goes away, problem solved, we're good to go. If you adjust them and the problem goes away finally, but they're adjusted to holy heck difference from each other, then you know you have another problem. Maybe they're not the right type of pickups to get to be get together. Maybe one pickup is crazy off the charts, like, you know, 13 and the other one's like a seven and, 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 you know, uh, and uh, just one's really hot and that's, you know, maybe it's misplaced. The other thing could happen is you could have frayed wires inside the cavity or something going on side and the electronics where the pickup is just not getting its full output, uh, it's not getting out to the amp. So you, that would let you know, again, these are troubleshooting. Remember the, the skill you pick up first, if you want to be good at fixing guitars, the first skill you will hone and work on is troubleshooting, right? No different than being a mechanic, no different than being a doctor. The first thing you do is not learn how to sand or solder. You learn how to troubleshoot because that's where your time goes. When people tell me all the time, Oh, I'll do a video and they go, that's easy. And I'm like, yeah, wait till you have to spend three hours trying to figure out that was the problem and it's not so easy. So uh, being able to diagnose the problem. So first with your pickups, like I said, do that first, check the heights, just adjust them until it's fine. Now, for instance, let's say you adjust them and let's say your bridge is way up here and your middle is way down here and you still have a problem. Again, all that's doing is confirming the first step of what I said, which is now we know it's not the height adjustment. We may want to look at some other issues going on, like whether or not there's not a ground fully connected, uh, whether or not uh, something is inhibiting the, 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 the signal somewhere in the, in the guitar, or it's just, maybe you just, somebody shoved the, the middle pick in there and pick up in there. And it's just this really hot high output pickup. And it's crazy. There's all kinds of things, but again, you just want to walk down that row, um, and do that stuff. Then things you have to do if you're a tech, it, let's say for instance, you check all the wiring and it's fine. I'm just walking you through some of the thought process I would do. If you gave me your guitar, I would go, okay, I adjust it. That it didn't fix the problem or it did fix it, but it doesn't look right now. I go through electronics. Everything looks fine. I would then swap the pickups. I know that sounds weird, but then I'd swap them to see what happens when I swap them. Because again, I'm trying to figure this out, try to see this. I would also put my multimeter on them and see what they're rating to see. So uh, I have a video on that. I'll put a link in the description. Just put them in there and that'll let you know it's a general guideline of what's going on, what's coming out of the guitar. And again, some people will say, hey, that's not uh, you know quantifiable. It's not. All right. That video, like a lot of my videos are first step videos. Like this is the first step. And then if that doesn't work, then you have to find some other fix. So something like that. Um, but there you go. All right. Let's go to, who are we going to? We are going to go to, I'm going to say the name right now. So I read it. Maybe. Uh, we're going to go to BK. Hey, BK. BK says, Hey, what is the cream looking telly guitar next to your left shoulder? It's not cream. Uh, it's called, I'm messing with my camera. Watch this. That change it. That didn't change it. I mess. See, this is the real color of the room. It's gray, <laughs> but I like this, this hue better. See how I'm changing again. This is in real time. This is the gray. This is hue. So um, that is my GNL and it's margarita is the color, right? Margarita lime. I love that name. 
It's uh, it's metallic green. My wife has described the color as uh, the color of your urine when you drink too much vitamin C. The first time she ever saw the color, that's what she said. She goes, "That's what it looks like. That's what looks like happens when you drink, you eat too much vitamin C." As I tongue twisted that up, but you get the idea. Horrible delivery, but you got the point. Uh, so that's what it is. I can't believe uh, uh, that's crazy. Yeah, I I can't believe it. Yeah, now that I look at it, it doesn't look like that's the right color, but it is. Um, Steven's got a question. He says, okay, okay to go with the Floyd, uh, EVH question regarding the bridge on the PRS. Okay. So he's good to go. We talking about, he's talking about the bridge we talked about earlier on the Floyd Rose bridge. Uh, now on the PRS custom 24 SE, I want to lock down my bridge. So how do you recommend locking down a floating bridge? Put wood on both sides just one. Okay. I don't do the wood on both sides, but I see that so many times. And that some people have asked me to do that anyway. It's like, Hey, that's how I like to do it. There's nothing wrong with that. To me, literally, if the bridge is being forced down by the Springs, I put the wood in front of it and it's done. Um, you can do that. Um, so I have a video on that as well. How to, you know, how to live with your Floyd Rose. If you don't love it. I love that video. That was my video acting debut. I was trying to be funny and uh, I did the video and, and and I love that video because it's like my first YouTuber video. Like I feel like, hey, I'm going to be like a YouTuber and be funny and do YouTuber type stuff. Um, what I love about that video is it did really well. Like 30% of the people don't get the joke. <laughs> They're like, Phil, if you don't like Floyd Rose, why have one? I'm like, well, I love Floyd Roses and I work on them all the time. But uh, that video is about the fact that everybody comes in and has me work on Floyd Rose and says the same thing. I hate this thing. <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, you know, you can block it. <laughs> and they was like, what's that? And that's why I did the video. Cause I thought, I was thinking about all the people that when I said block a Floyd Rose went, what is that? I thought, oh, there's gotta be a lot of those out there on the internet. And there was, cause I think it's got a couple hundred thousand views. So, um, to answer your question, uh, would you can get one of those adjustment brass pieces that adjust to block? Um, I use those as well. Uh, I'm doing a sharpen max. Uh, I just, I finished it. I just didn't want to release the video until the guitar is back in the, in the, uh, the uh, owner's hands. But, uh, cause of everything that went wrong in the world, I didn't have a box. Uh, cause no, you know, so anyways, uh, long story short, that's an, uh, there's another adjustment, but yeah, you can block it with one piece of wood. You'd be fine. I like wood blocking the trims with wood for some reason. I think it's cause a lot of times you use the metal ones, which are fine too. They make a little click sound. I don't like that. But yeah. Uh, Voodoo Fist says, any plans for the KYG face mask? So a company reached out and asked me if I want to do a, a Know Your Gear face mask. Um, they only do them in white. They don't do them in black. Because I said, yeah, black with the KYG logo. Um, the deal was, this is the deal they sent me. They said, hey, we'll make the mask. And then I think they gave me a percentage of everyone they sell. So it's like a royalty deal. And they donate to uh to 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 some charity for i didn't read all the stuff because what happened was before i can say yes to that they have to send me a sample so they said they send me a sample but the problem i have is the price seems psychotically overpriced so i'm like right i feel like yeah you're gonna give me a little piece of this and you're gonna donate a little piece of this but you're upcharging the crap out of the viewers so but I don't know because if you look at the masks right now, um, my wife is really in tune with this and she's been telling me there's like, there's, I'm not very in tune with the masks. Okay, guys. Um, the mask I've been using is the, the Kiesel one that came with my guitar. Kiesel sent a mask with the guitar. I guess that's what they're doing now with guitars. And so I've just been using that. Um, uh, my friend, Stephanie, who's going to laugh if she, cause I did the shout out. She made me a cool mask, but she didn't know that I uh, apparently don't know how to tie. Uh, behind my head is what I learned. When you have those masks, you tie. Uh, the mask she made me is beautiful. And if I knew how to tie behind my head, I would do it. And uh, my wife, uh, she's probably making a face if she's watching this live, uh, as that my wife made at me, which is like, you know, like I, the they felt like that was the dumbest thing I could ever say. I guess it is. I just, I don't understand. I don't know how to tie behind my head. <laughs> like in the, mo in, the, in the shows, the doctor's always like, and they do the thing. I swear. I'm just anyways, back, uh, back to what I'm saying. Uh, the masks, there's different ones like the M95s. And so I, I, to answer your question, Voodoo Fist, uh, 
you know, uh, I, I was intrigued by it because they said they would, it would, I, I love the idea that it's going to donate to help somebody, maybe some fund, some, some frontline workers. Um, the royalty gig is always not a bad gig because it's a great way to fund the channel by giving you something. You know what I mean? If you guys buy something and then it funds the channel, like when you do the affiliate links that I leave in there, or if you do patrons or, or if you do the, uh, the, the shirts, uh, and the hats and stuff, obviously it funds the channel. It's great. And I know it's like nice to get something in return for that. Um, so I'll let you guys know. I'm going to share the mask as soon as I get it. We'll just, I want to, this will be one of the few things that I don't decide on my own. It will definitely be on a live show. I'll show you the mask. We'll talk about it. We'll probably look up prices and stuff. I know it sounds silly. I just, I, like I said, I don't want to get this wrong. This feels kind of important to me to not just, you know, let's not step in crap and do this wrong. Uh, Neil says, uh, Hey Phil, uh, I have a couple Ormsby guitars. I really want an Ormsby guitar. I don't know what it is. They're, they're like great looking guitars. I, I've only touched them at the NAMM show and they're always really fantastic. And I mean, the Indonesian ones, some of the Indonesian ones just blew me away. I got them all wrong. When I was playing the Indonesian ones. They were like, what do you think of these? And I go, yeah, these are like made in Australia, right? And they're like, no, Indonesia. I'm like, man, it's great. Uh, okay. So the, he's going on to say, which use jumbo stainless steel frets, which I find excellent. What are your thoughts regarding stainless steel compared to other uh, metal used? Cheers. Uh, yeah, I think my official stance on stainless steel is I don't like them as much as nickel, but I can't ever detect when they're on the guitars. So I think that's about as honest of an answer as you'll ever get from anyone. I would not bet one dollar bill <laughs> if you gave me two guitars or 10 guitars and told me five had stainless steel and five had nickel. Um, and I had to just play them. I'm not talking about like kind of inspect them and try to figure out. I think most guitars I can detect if it's stainless steel by bending this, the note. And when you bend the note, there's no friction on the stainless steel. But however, you can polish the crap out of some nickel, hard nickel uh, frets. And they will, uh, for a short time, be like stainless steel, very frictionless. Um, that being said, I, I wouldn't be able to hear a difference, yet I feel like there's a difference. So the... I'm trying to get there, right? I have guitars with stainless steel. The Parker behind me has stainless steel. My AZs, which I don't know if there's an AZ behind me, has stainless steel. This uh, this Kiesel has stainless steel. Um, I, I like them fine. I like, right? I just, I just, uh, but I can honestly tell you, um, I don't think I've ever picked stainless steel on any one of my guitars. I think every guitar I have a stainless steel when I bought it just came with stainless steel and I'm fine with that, but I've never like sought after, sought after to get stainless steel. Um, so, but, uh, I love the idea of not doing a fret job. Um, and some people say, they'll say, uh, why would anyone use anything besides stainless steel once they know how great stainless steel is, you know, longevity wise, you know, it lasts forever. You don't need roof frets. I don't necessarily disagree with that. I think the big problem is, is that a lot of players feel like there's a difference. And, um, and again, like I said, I can't detect the difference, but I still think there's a difference. It happens, <laughs> right? It just does. It's right. So it's the silliness of the, of the thing. Uh, and eventually my brain will catch up <laughs> my brain, my brain will. All right. Actually, I'll bet I should say not my brain, my heart, my emotions, my emotions eventually do catch up with my brain. In other words, my brain has to eventually uh, has to convince the other emotional parts of my being that stop being so stupid. So um, my emotion says, oh, they're not the same. Stainless steel is great, but it's not like the nickel. And then my brain finally fixes it, I think. Um, hopefully. I'm sure a lot of you feel that way. A lot of you guys, a lot of you just love stainless steel. And a lot of you guys hate stainless steel. And some of you like me are, I guess I'm kind of indifferent, but I prefer... Well, I don't prefer non-stainless steel. I'm just saying I don't I don't feel the need to have stainless steel on my guitars. So uh Scott did a giant bird thumbs up uh emoji that I I don't know if you see that, but it's pretty cool. Uh the thumb is as big as the bird. And then uh Ross did one. It says, Hey Phil, uh will a standard strat neck fit on a squire? Not always, but sometimes. So you do have to measure and Squire over the years in the recent years, uh, last, I want to say it's, I don't think it's safe to say 10 years yet, but close in the last 10 years, Squire has become more standardized size 
than it's ever been before with its bridges fitting into fender parts, fitting onto them, pick guards. Um, for a while, Squire was just all over the place. I mean, it was like a nightmare working on those. You know what I mean? The pick guard holes just didn't line up with anything. Um, it's funny to me. It's funny to me, like the bridges wouldn't line up. The nuts are different uh, nut widths, uh, different string spacing, different neck pocket shapes. So um, so what I'm basically going to tell you, I know what you're trying to get at because you want to obviously put a, a fender neck on your Squire body and, and, and fix it and stuff. Um, but you do want to do a little research because you don't want to get that wrong. And that's what I'm saying. Um, so, no, I wish it was as easy as uh, you can't. But uh, you can, but you do need to do some measuring. So... What's the saying? Measure twice, cut once. Same thing. Measure twice before you buy the neck. All right, let's do some non super chats. See what's going on. We're at one hour mark, so we'll try to try to keep going a little bit. Um, okay. Um, Tony says, this is weird. I'm just going to read this. I'm sorry, guys. Tony says, I feel like I can't breathe when I wear the mask. Um, you know what? Uh, I don't have that problem, but it's 112 degrees. For those of you who live in other places besides the U.S., uh, 112 degrees is like 6 million Fahrenheit, no, Celsius. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I used to know. Um, I think 32 is, is 98. I, 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 somebody out there, you know what? You just Google it. Here's what you got to know. It's 112 degrees where I live and wearing the mask is not fun in that heat <laughs> because you're like hot breath is just trapped in there. It's not a, that, that I don't enjoy, but you know what? Uh, you wear it, you know, it's, I, I wasn't, I wasn't, I'll, I'll, I, I, I don't, I usually try not to talk about this stuff, but you know, I try to stay guitar centric, but I want to tell you on the mask thing is kind of funny. At first I wasn't, I, I don't want to, I didn't want to wear the mask because I didn't want to. And I, I get the, the thing now, the thing is like, we're supposed to wear the mask. Cause it's like, a, if you have, you know, if you have COVID, you don't want to get somebody sick. That's how that I, I don't care what's going on in the world right now. The last thing I want to do is make anybody sick. So I started pointing at wearing the mask because that reason only right? Some people are for the mask. Some people are against the mask. They have all these opinions. Here's the reality of this. I, I don't, I, I try to sleep at night like everybody else. Last thing I need to know, think is that, you know, I would hate to wake up tomorrow with COVID and then have to think about all the people I was, ex I exposed to it the last day or so. And I was like, ah, oh, crap, maybe I should have worn that mask. That's why I'm wearing the mask. So I'm wearing the mask because I want to sleep at night. I don't want to get anybody sick. So I don't, you know, there you go. So, uh, so I start wearing it, but damn, man, when it's 112, it's freaking hot to wear that thing. Cause like I said, it's like, <laughs> you can imagine. I mean, it's already hard. I don't wear a hat when it's this hot. You know what I mean? It's just too hot. It's just hot. So, all right. Um, Dave says, is your temperatures a little high? Stay home. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I agree. I agree. But you know, the, the caveat to this is, again, we're not talking about, we're not talking about whether anything's real or not real. The caveat is they say that you can be sick and not know it. My argument is not whether or not they're right or wrong. My argument is if I woke up and I was sick, I would think about, you know, <sighs> did I expose anybody? And I don't want to expose anybody. And if you don't want to wear the mask, then you know, that's on you. That's it. I'm, you know, I live in a country where you could do with it, whatever the hell you want. So do what you, do what you want. <laughs> Don't break the law. That's it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Tony says, Phil notices the random. You know what it is? I do. I notice comments that are, uh, well, it's also what I'm interested in or what I think you guys, I mean, the mask thing, I've been wearing it lately and it's been hot. So that's why I was thinking of it. Uh, um. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Tony agrees with me. You shouldn't break the law. That's it's pretty straightforward, right? All right. Um, we're going to do another couple of questions. Let's see what we got. I, I don't think I got through some of these. Um, 
We have Scott did a super chat for no reason. I just want to say thank you, Scott. I appreciate that. Uh, then we have Bruce. Bruce says, uh, not a reissue. He's talking about the 69 Telly thin line. So it's not a reissue. Uh, he says, my dad bought it in 69. Thanks. Uh, that is the answer I was looking for. Just did not want to damage it. Yeah. So if it's a real deal, then be careful. Like I said, don't leave in that case too long. Too, the, the, basically, think of it this way, Bruce. The longer, and again, this is one of those things where finish experts, people who do refinish work, are going to be very, very, uh, have a better articulate answer than I am. I am um, I'm educated enough about these subjects because, again, it's not what I, I don't do finish work. So I don't educate myself on everything about finish work, but I do repair work. So I, of course, educate myself on things that prevent repair. Um, think about this way. This is how I think about lacquer, nitrous lacquer. The more you starve it from oxygen, okay, the more problem you're probably going to have. So think about that. So when things come in contact, think about like covering up your mouth, right? You're not going to get oxygen through your hand. You're not going to get oxygen through a piece of rubber. If you if you use a rubber hanger or a rubber stand, if you took that material and put it over your mouth, you couldn't get air through it. Uh, same thing with the, the the material in the case. If you rub that, put that over your over your face and you can't breathe through it, you, you understand when your guitar is sitting against it. Uh, apparently, you know that's the way I like think of this because it does it, it's, I'm not saying that physically starving the lacquer from oxygen causes it. I'm what I'm saying is is that. I'm right about this, that when there is no oxygen to that finish, it seems to be where the, the problem with the finish happens. So like I said, just, but unlike your guitars, unlike you, you can only last minutes with something covering up your face. The guitar can last days, if not weeks, just don't leave it for long periods of time. You're fine. I think you got that from the first con, but I, again, I, I want to make sure you understand because, uh, you know, you have a great guitar there. 1969 Thin Line uh, um, Fender is a very cool guitar. So, uh, you want to take care of it. Uh, fret level midnight says, Hey, I have a Harley Benton ST, uh, upgraded it. Um, and, and it says, I don't know what it, it's a lot of abbreviations. S U F living intonation. I think it's intonation, right? Uh, neck is just not my thing. Feels cheap. Would be a fun idea to be just upgrade the neck to aftermarket. Um, you could, you know, you okay, so basically what he's getting at is he's not he's not loving the neck. I I've said this many times, uh, front level middle night. The neck is the handshake of a guitar. You shake the hand, you know, you put your hand on that neck. It's like shaking somebody's hand. You know right then whether or not you're gonna like somebody or not like somebody when I'm shaking their hand. Uh, at least I do. <laughs> so, uh, but. Uh, but basically, when you put your hand on your neck, if you don't like it, I understand that. Um, so swap it on the neck. I understand that concept, too. You can. You can. You can understand, though. You can buy. An, uh, there's probably very few necks you can buy that cost less than what the, the guitar, the Harley Benton's cost. So it's up to you to upgrade it and do that stuff. I mean, you really can't go wrong because if you don't like it, you always put the old neck on. and You still have the new neck to do something else. But, yeah, you can do that. Uh, and, and it may change things. Um, if uh, here's what I always say with this stuff, when you're doing upgrades, if you're after the experience, in other words, if you're after the, uh, Hey, I have an afternoon of modding my guitar and I'm going to enjoy that time and I'm going to learn, or I already know how to do it. And I want to, you know, this do it. If you're doing it to fall in love with a guitar, to keep the guitar, I'm gonna, don't waste your money. Like I said, um, when people do upgrades, there's two arguments. Uh, one argument is like you shouldn't upgrade guitars because it's putting, you know, it's a waste of money. It's not a waste of money if you enjoy your time. This is all to enjoy our time. Anyone fixing up a guitar, unless you're doing it for a living, you're just doing it to, to enjoy more time. So there's no waste there. However, like I said, if that's not the case, then yeah, be, be cautious with your funds because there's better things you can spend them on, uh, especially on this, this kind of stuff. So, uh, Bill says, discuss the mystique appeal of the Gibson Les Paul gold top. Anything special is that one over your left, uh, is that one over your left shoulder? Yeah. So over my left shoulder is a gold top Les Paul. This is a standard. I had a classic, the classic, uh, I did a video. It's, <laughs> I bought a Les Paul classic for my anniversary and I love that guitar. In fact, I, I think I liked it a, a, as much, if not more, than the standard I have now. But, uh, like, I made a little sound effect there. Uh, but uh, what happened was, I think I said this, my buddy Joe, I had this floral gem, which I still have, and he, I wanted to buy it, and he didn't want to sell it. He said, like, let's trade. And the only thing I had worth trading him was, because he's in the Les Pauls, was that Les Paul. So we traded. And it was a really good trade for me. 
Um, it, you know, it, I, that was definitely a one, I, like I said, I call a friendship trade. He didn't really need to trade me his guitar. You know what I mean? Um, so, uh, basically, um, what happened was, uh, he, uh, we did the trade and, uh, I still wanted to go to less fall. So I eventually saw a standard one day and I bought that used. I got that. Um, so, um, so anyways, uh, so back to what I was saying with the Les Paul is, um, what's the mystique of it? I don't know. <laughs> uh, people just like the way they look. I like the way it looks. I'm not into, uh, uh, furniture guitars. I'm not into fancy woods. If you look behind me, look, I mean, I mean, obviously the Kiesel came, that was kind of a wood thing. Um, but that's like just a piece of wood, no flame top. Same thing with this Parker. It's just a piece of mahogany that's painted. That's painted. That's just a piece of wood that Pierre has. It's not a flame top. Uh, then it's a black guitar. That, you see what I'm saying? Uh, the the classic thin light or light piece of wood. I'm just not into flames and quilts and stuff. Most of my guitars are just opaque painted colors or uh, you know basic pieces of wood. I don't know what it is. I'm just not into the fancy stuff. I appreciate it. I just don't. I don't. I don't. Doesn't anything. So gold top for me. I don't know. Just it's a look. That's all it is for me. So, uh, Max Shade Seven says, "Hey Phil, what's your opinion on silk and steel strings for acoustic guitars?" Uh, silk and uh, for okay it's for a genre. Silk and steel strings. Let me drink some water, guys. Hold on. Silk and steel, like silk. Uh, like milk with an S silk and steel strings are strings that are essentially for the best part, our best explanation, hybrid strings. So if you're familiar with classical strings, which are nylon and then steel strings, which are steel or phosphor bronze and bronze and steel, um, silk and steel is like a hybrid and uh, love them. They're one of the strings that we would suggest a lot of times. Cause a lot of times you go into store and at music store and you're like, okay, I want to put nylon strings on, this acoustic guitar so it plays easier and they're like well you can't put nylon strings on steel string you can uh, they always say that you can you, you probably shouldn't but you can you cannot put steel strings on a classical guitar most of the time because the classical guitars don't have a truss rod that's why they say that <clears throat> also if it does have a truss rod uh, most of the classical tuning keys, the, they have a plastic shroud around them. And if you put steel through them, sometimes they crack that shroud and they just destroy the tuning keys. So again, though, I've seen people do either one and with success and failure. So always take those roads uh, at your own uh, risk. But silk and steel is a great way to get your acoustic guitar to feel more like a classical guitar, be a little easier to play and still uh, be something that doesn't need a whole lot of adjustment on your steel string acoustic. And of course gives you the best of both worlds. So I like them and certain brands. I use the Dario, but a lot of people like Tomastic and all kinds of really cool, you know, higher end brands that do that stuff. Again, you can check that stuff out. I, I'm also a big proponent for trying out weird strings, man. Some people, you don't understand if you if you see a, a bunch of guitars and you're thinking I need every guitar. Excuse me, guys. I'm trying not to cough. <clears throat> I apologize. Like I said, got to drink water. Okay. Uh, one thing you do besides buying a ton of guitars is trying different strings on guitars. Believe it or not, and I don't mean different gauges, just different styles of strings. There's all kinds of strings. There's flat rounds. There's semi flat rounds. There's uh, you know obviously nickel. Uh, pure nickel strings, which give you a different sound than nickel plated or like uh, steel strings, um, like stainless steel strings. So there's there's different things out there. Try them. It's cool. Like I said, so like them. Dan says, hey, Phil, I like, I'd like i like to thank you for your input on my Ibanez GRX70QA. Wanted uh, to spruce up my, fa my father's own Tiesco. Del Rey, any suggestions? Oh, man, is that an old blast of the past guitar? Tiesco Del Rey. Right now, there's a few dudes going, oh, remember that? Um, let's see. Suggestions. The The problem with the Tiesco uh, guitars like that is they used to be worthless. Isn't that funny? I remember when somebody would come with a Tiesco guitar and <clears throat> they'd be like, hey, I want to trade this in or sell this to the shop. And we'd be like, <laughs> No, <laughs> and, you know, and then sometimes you throw like stupid offers, like I can give you 20 bucks and then be like, all right, and be like, damn it. Now I have this thing. Um, now they're fetching 
two, three, four, five, seven hundred dollars for those guitars. So proof again that we all just want to relive our childhood. <laughs> Right. Maybe, maybe there's some musicians out there like Jack Black do, are doing some crazy stuff, you know, or Jack White. Is Jack White? Jack White. I'm thinking Jack Black's the other guy from School Rock. Jack White. Uh, maybe there's musicians doing weird stuff with them and it's probably cool and inspiring people. But the most part, it's just people trying to relive, you know, like, remember when I was 16 and my mom took me to Sears and got a guitar? I mean, there's all this kind of stuff, right? Who who doesn't want to relive that time in your life? Um, uh, the, uh, the, the point I'm trying to say is I believe that a lot of the value of those kind of guitars is driven from the fact that people just want to retouch a moment in their life where they were having some fun. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that, man. Nothing, nothing at all. Uh, so, uh, anyways, uh, you know, it's a tough world. Do whatever you can do to make yourself, give yourself a little joy at a time. So I've been saying that in my 20 years. Uh, but anyways, back to, Dan's issue. <laughs> Dan, uh, what can you do? You're going to find your hard pressed to find a lot of mods to do that guitar because everything on that guitar is unique. That wacky bridge is its own thing. It's wacky pickups. It's got a wacky pick guard. You could probably replace the pick guard out. Um, my, and now that they're going up in value now, of course, any mods you do to that guitar, you're now taking a chance that you're now devaluing the guitar, which is a crazy thing to say. Um, so uh, it, it's, it's up to you. My personal thing is attend to its needs. That guitar, okay, guitars like that. These inexpensive, uh, and I dare say Sears, you know, Montgomery Ward type guitars. Um, and, and if somebody corrects me and says, oh, th that's not where from Sears or Montgomery Ward, I, I don't know where they're from. I'm, I'm not that old to remember when these guitars were. The, that was not my thing. So, you know, I, I just know you don't have to be much older than me for it to be your thing when you went to the store and that's where you got them. Um, but I have worked on enough of these and worked with guys to know that's what the story is. So um, anyways, to the thing is uh, tend to its needs. So there's some guitars that don't need mods. You don't need to change the way it sounds, make it sound better. It's got its own vibe. It's kind of cool. Um, so you don't need to mod it up. You need to fix any of the issues. So tend to its needs mean make sure you clean out the potentiometers with some contact cleaner. Make sure you go through and uh, make sure the output jack's working correctly and it's tightened up. And if it's not, you, that's something you replace. Anytime you're dealing with any guitar that has any potential value, two things you want to follow the rules that you're hopefully a good tech will follow and you can follow them too. First, don't do any modification guitars that can't be reversed. In other words, drill holes in it. Don't do anything that literally will change the guitar from being all original. The second thing is, if you do replace anything without doing any modification to it, please keep those parts. Put those parts in baggies. Now, keep in mind, these guitars are so old, there's probably toxic crap in there. I mean, there's definitely, you know, lead in the solder. <laughs> So like I, I don't know. So um, uh, I always think about that when I'm soldering all those little guitars and that weird smoke goes up in the air and you think, uh. <laughs> anyways. Um, so, uh, you know, work on the, uh, fixing the nut. If the nut is cracked, maybe fix the tuners. There's a ba uh, Bakelite. Uh, 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 and I just found out recently that I guess that's the actual correct pronunciation. I watched a documentary on it. Um, I, I'm big, you know, into guitars, as you notice, and, and, uh, the old guitars have Bakelite plastic. And so the Bakelite cracks and crumbles. Sometimes when you turn in those tun tuning keys, they just literally fall apart. So sometimes what I tell people is if you can find aftermarket tuning keys to put on those without any modifications, do that and put the old ones in a baggie. Cause the same thing, eventually those things are going to fall apart anyways. They're just, just crumble in your hands. That's what makes me nervous when I work on certain guitars like that, people bring them in and, uh, and, uh, you know, it depends. I try to eyeball it and go through and figure out my thing um, and be smart. But every once in a while, I have to have you sign a waiver saying, hey, if any of this thing falls apart while I'm working on it, I can't be held responsible because, you know, even I'm just like, ah, oh, this is going to be a mess. So that's what I would do, Dan. Just like I said, tend to its needs. Um, all right. Anything else before we go? We did pretty good. It was a pretty good live show. Uh, like I said, we skipped last week. So hopefully this week was fun for you guys. Um, and I'll do two more, no more super chats at all. I'm not answering anymore after uh, a very dead horse. So the next one is music therapy. Laz L A Z says, uh, <laughs> he says, I keep misdelling 
tings using my pwn. <laughs> uh, is there an app for that? You the man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, uh, uh, yeah. So uh, he's basically, we're talking about the earlier comment about the fact that every time I respond my phone, it's just all jumbled stuff. I always, ha I have this great idea. If any of you guys are app developers out there, uh, I have an idea. You can just take the idea, you know, right. But I, I'm, I, mean, I think it's a great idea. I have an idea for an app for your phone where what it does is you, it takes whatever you type and puts it into polite speech. So what happens is when somebody's on, you know, driving you nuts, you, like, Hey, it could be your boss, could be your significant other, could be your brother or sister, could be your friend. It could be the person you just don't like. You could then type, go F yourself. You're driving me crazy, whatever you want. And then the app will be like, Hey, I hope you have a great day. It was nice talking to you again. Right. It basically, that's what the app does. <laughs> it takes whatever you put that's negative and puts it, turns into a positive thing and sends it to them. And you get it out of your system and they read a nice text. So there's my idea. All right. Very dead horse. Last one of the day says, hey, Phil, I have a two part question. All right. Part one is in regular chat. OK, I'd also like to know if the trim is the same as the strat. Uh, OK, so now I got to find it's like a scavenger hunt. What's it? OK, a very dead horse. Uh, has sent me on a scavenger hunt to find his the first part of his question. This could be a new interesting thing that no one will dig. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, a very dead horse, if I don't find your question in the next 10 seconds, you're probably screwed because there's no way we can sit dead air for 10 minutes while I read this or find you. Because um, there's no search. I don't see your first question. And so I hate to say it. I don't think I can answer your question. I apologize, but there's just no way, guys. I can't find it. I'm already scrolling back. Like, there's just too much stuff. Oh, okay. Wait, I found your super chat. So imagining that your original one is right before that. Yeah, you're not kidding. There's a lot of people on this uh, live show because like the comments are like, I'm scrolling back like thousand comments. I still can't find it. I'm a very dead horse. Literally, I think we're going to end the show with this and no question answered. Uh, but I will tell you what I will do. Here's what I will do. I will try and find it and answer it next week because there's just no way I can't find it. I'm sorry, guys. Unless any of you are reposting it, I don't see it. Uh, so, all right. On that note, I think we're going to call it an hour and 20 minutes. We talked about a bunch of stuff about guitar. We had a good time. I hope you did. I had a good time talking about guitar. Um, and uh, <laughs> boo. Oh, man. You guys are going to boo me now? All right. Let me one more time as I ruin this live show by scrolling forever uh, i mean you think of like a name with a very dead horse you would find us this could be the ultimate troll comment because i'm just going to spend the whole time looking for a thing that doesn't exist how about that for a live show i do still do not see it I'm sorry, guys. I can only try so many times. I am scrolling. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. And I don't see it. All right. I'm going to call that. All right, guys. Sorry about that. But uh, on that note, I'm going to let you guys go. I hope you guys enjoyed the show this, uh, this week. Also, keep in mind, there's podcasts. The reason I'm telling you that is because there's podcasts. Like, if you notice, this is episode 161. There is no 160 on YouTube because... It's only available as a podcast. Um, it's uh, so just let you know. It, it's 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 not the same thing as this. It's something different. It's just me answering long form emails. I put them also on the uh, on the channel. Uh, I'd like you guys' thoughts on that too. You seem to like it. Then I'm going to put the in between episodes also on the channel as unlive shows. But um, but let me know. Let me know. Like I said, I, I I hope you guys enjoy it. On that, you guys have a fantastic weekend. Enjoy your families and friends and play guitar. And until next time. Know your gear. <laughs>